among a great variety of winter fishing gear. Marmishka is the most widely spread. No other fishing bait can boast such a broad variety of forms, weights and colors. Hardly anyone could define how many kinds of jack exist nowadays. So what is a marmishka? Sergei, one of the most experienced fishermen in the business, will help us to figure that out. Since childhood, Sergei has had two passions in his life. Women? That's just beyond the words. And fishing. But when these two passions had crossed over, he was giving preference to the second one. So, where did the Marmishka originally come from? There is a popular belly of the Siberian rivers inhabited by some underwater insect called Marmish. And it was Siberians who began to use it as a bait. So, as a matter of fact, it's a Russian know-how. It was invented in the USSR or in Russia. I don't know how to exactly call this country, so let's say Russia. We came up with this invention, we use it, and it has spread all over the world. So, that's it. Yeah, for sure, you can catch absolutely any fish using marmushka. As to the type of marmushka, any fisherman has its own favorite ones. And there is a huge diversity of its forms. Bitless slug imitations work good. Nowadays, very decent chicks are also made in forms of maggots. They are much weightless and soft ones. I would rather classify marmishkas for the ones that are used with a natural bait and the ones that can be used without it. In the latter case, you just have to masterly play with it. Such chicks certainly have to be multicolored, very informed in content. They will imitate fodder base for the fish on which it will react and bite. Oh, what a good roach! Oh, just a big rough. The 
Bodrum was once again beaten from this smart jig. And it was done by a rough that lives in the bottom. Wow, drink on the no because I'm about to rip it up like my dickens in the trunk. Bring that beat up, hit the beat up, and put your feet up. And let's wild out like we was in the heat up. That was a rough bite. Once again has stolen my blood one. But I have had three on a hand. So two more bites are still to come. Here comes the second one. Unlucky. And that's the third one. Successful. Fishing is all about searching the appropriate place. Certain type of ice may be ice ridge of any snowbound part. When you fish with Marmishka, it's better to take a huge solid boreal with you. With its help, you can drill a vast hole in the ice. A dribble large fish using the jig. This I don't consider myself to be an angler who is chasing after result. As a rule, I choose place for fishing judging by visual appearance of ice. Then I drill a few holes in it from 7 to 10 normally. And after that I stuff it with a biting. Regarding angling lines that are used with marmishkas, you would rather prefer the thinnest one. Basically, that's the reasonable choice commonly made by anglers. But in case of amateur fishing, there is always a chance to catch a big fish. Bream, for instance. Yeah, that's good, it's a bream. It's a bream. Come on, buddy, don't let me down. Such an awesome bream! Well, it's a kind of a bonus when you catch small fish with Marmishka. Bream is a really trophy for ice fishermen. It's rare as wallows, the bait, and that always cheers you up when it happens. Maybe not the largest bream, but pretty one anyway. That's why I advise you to take a big borer, 180 or 200 millimeters. Bream nibbles at Marmishka fairly well. In winter time, the main thing while catching Bream specifically at night is to observe silence. And you have to prepare the shell during the daytime. If Bream is biting at daytime, you can confidently put up a tent and angle at night. In winter, Bream is a grouping fish, so it shall bite. So, if Bream is spotted, you should stuff the place, wait till the fish get used to people staying on ice, and then you can try and take fish at night. Quite an entertaining fishing, I must say. I prefer not to separate sport fishing and amateur fishing with Marmishka, because any non-professional can try out sport jig during his routine fishing. Non-professional jigs are sold in stores while sport jigs, as a rule, are custom-made for certain sportsmen, and you can't simply purchase them at shop. I suppose they are purely intended for certain basins, certain person and certain fish.
And if we want to get more detailed view on sport jigs, I guess we should refer this question to professional anglers, as I am not classified among them. In the U.S., uh, many people ice fish, especially across the ice belt. They fish in fish houses, they, they fish all over here. Uh, it's like a way of life here uh, amongst the northern regions. Southern part, no ice, but in northern parts, you know, it's a very normal thing. People live on the lake sometimes uh, and really enjoy themselves. And there's a lot of interest in it, you know. They, you know, all the locals come out and watching us fish, seeing what's going on. Uh, they're very interested. You know, they can't believe we have a world competition in it. Uh, <laughs> you know, they just fish for fun. It's one of them them things. You know, it's uh, you know having a sport out of it. They, they you know it's always just an enjoyable thing. But we've taken a turn it into a competition. You know, Americans got seem like they got to compete at everything. It seems like how we get fulfilled. And I started off competitive ice fishing maybe 10 years ago, and now I'm fishing on the world team. So I mean, whew, what a deal. In the United States, we use a lot bigger uh, jigs than you do in Europe because our, our fish seem to be a little bit bigger, but we jig them real aggressively too, uh, twitching our rods up way more than, uh, than normal. Our fish are real aggressive, so they come in and grab it real quick. And, uh, but we, and we use heavier jigs. I'll show you my jig. Our, our jigs are, are a little bigger compared to others. A couple of, uh, we use spikes, or pinkies, maggots, wax worms, one or two on a hook. And then we, we, we jig it real aggressively. We use all different colors of jigs. Some of our favorites are uh, white and pink, oranges, reds, chartreuse and yellows. My line is yellow. Uh, so I, I, I no, no spring bobber, I don't do that. All I do is watch the line. And the line tells me if I get a bite or not. In the United States, we also, we reel our fish in. When we, when we get a fish, they can strip out line real quick and we can reel them up very fast. The main objective of fishing on this pond is crappie. Very uncommon fish for us. It lives in water columns and you have to catch it in all layers. It reacts on biting very ambiguously. But we try to get adjusted for that. We have some insights and currently we are at the point of having our final training, on which we will resolve our remaining issues and set up tactics for the competition. Uh, we jig continuously up and down, keep the bait moving to attract the fish. Um, fish are a lot down by bottom, sometimes up a ways, you know, it's high off bottom. There we go. All I needed was a camera. All I needed was a camera, fellas. And that's what they look like. And a fresh haul. Now it's done. In case with the perch, the mechanism is typical. You have to play in bottom waters with fairly quick tremble, slow lifting and slow descent. It's all a bit more complicated regarding grappling. You ought to play in water columns, in different layers, but anyway you should do it smoothly. For our bigger fish, usually what we do, 
when we hook those I'll show you how we hook them with our spikes we take just usually either one or two right on the they have a pointed end and then they have a, a flat end usually on the flat end we just just hook them on the end like that with two on we'll jiggle back and forth when we jiggle it with our wax worms they have a, a head a tail and then we take it this will come out in the water this will just jiggle like this and then the insides like that will come out and, and, and stream out and the fish come up and grab those that's that's how we fish those sometimes if we're using really tiny tiny baits sometimes we'll we'll thread it on on the hook and kind of cover the hook up a little bit we'll take one and thread it right onto the hook and cover the hook right up and, and keep it real real compact that way can you see that in the water sometimes we can little particles come out that's the way you want it you want it straight out from the hook sometimes we jiggle it, jiggle it real hard like that sometimes we just want it waving it attracts the fish a little better the insides come out <laughs> We don't use the same tactics in this competition as during Russian tournaments. In Russia we drill many holes, 15, 20 or 30 right from the start, and then fish them out during the round. Here you have to drill and fish out at most 2 or 3 holes at a time, and then move on and drill holes in the next spot. Well, our team plan here is uh, we're practicing it right now. Uh, we're probably going to spend uh, 10 minutes per hole. You know, we're going to be out of time frame because these fish in this lake take a few minutes to respond. It seems like when we get them, we get them within two to seven minutes. So we're going to be on a stopwatch, so we drill a hole. I mean, that's what we've been practicing here. Uh, it's our final day tactics, and we're practicing that. So when we go to a spot we think is going to be okay, you know, we fish 10 minutes, but if you don't produce a fish in 10 minutes, you move. It takes, it takes a while for them to come sometimes. Uh, but you don't always catch them, of course. But uh, we're going to be on a stopwatch where you got 10 minutes, move, 10 minutes, move, 10 minutes, move. Tactics for this competition and everything that we have practiced during our training sessions, these are, are the signs that it would be a tough tournament. There would be a real contention for each fish and each crown would count. And I suppose we all ought to work real hard. Yeah, we, uh, we did a fish study. Well, we fished for days and uh, we decided that we needed the crappies because one crappie weighed as much as 10 perch. We felt if you could catch three crappies, you could catch more weight than you could with 25 perch. So, Europeans are very good at them little fish. Very good. We knew we couldn't outfish them on the little fish. So, let them have them. We fished. We took our chances fishing for bigger fish. Oh, 
On the second round, our main purpose was stable performance of each sportsman. We haven't aimed to gain the lead in the zones. We wanted everybody to act on the same level, in the area of free five plays, and that nobody would fail, fall off and let the team down. The fish was fairly smeared out all over the place on the first and second day. We had to shift around all the time. And if anyone caught something, you had to run towards the place, drill it, occupy the space and try to gain the precious grams of fish. Our team clearly decided to use baiting after this training. It was maggot, and we had tons of it. They had certainly yielded the result. We were hoping to do better, but uh, that's the way it turned out. And uh, really happy. Hope everybody had a good time at the venue. Uh, they were worried about the limits on the lake, how many fish, but it was very difficult to get the fish. It was not easy to catch a lot of fish here. Fish caught a lot of small fish, some big ones. Uh, no carp, eh? Saw no carp. We caught them practicing, but never caught one in a tournament. Lots of crappies, perch, a few bluegills. Uh, typical American fishing, uh, tough body of water. The Americans even struggled on it. So, very fair competition. Uh, we didn't get to, you know, fish the zones really, or fish around through there, you know, like anybody else. Uh, very fair competition, and then we got beat. That's all there is to it. Very disappointed, but <laughs> looking forward to the next one, looking forward to the next one. Today I had luck to hook some kind of wood or snack from the third ice hole. And I realized that I would certainly go after a prize, because the bed was very smooth-faced and such animal is a positive sign. After I had cut off the jig, I drilled a hole in 50 centimeters from the wood, and the best part of fish I have caught from here. It was crappy that bite it as well as local bluegill and perch. You had to punctually bite the place with jig and keep the hull from opponents. All contestants were drilling the space around me, but they couldn't draw the fish away from me. Now we'll start the way of the second round. USA team, Myron Gilbert. Six fish, 365 grams. Photo. We could have fished better. We're disappointed, you know, no medal. Of course, we want a gold, but we was hoping after yesterday that we can come back and get a medal. Russia, Alexei Zelezkin. 25 fish, 439, 439. Poland, Tomasz Nistal. Four fish, 70 grams, 70. Before the tournament, we considered USA and Polish team our main rivals, because they have their own expatriate community here and know the pond very well. USA, Chet Shaw, 25 fish, 676. After the waiting right to the final zone, we trailing Lithuania and Finland team by two and a half points. And following the final tour, when Finnish sportsmen had caught no fish, we became the champions. Uh, I think it was a great competition. Uh, Russia, what a nice job for them. Uh, they haven't won a gold in a while, but they've medaled many, many, many times. Very powerful team. 
uh, fine fishers. Good job, Lithuania. Good job for them. Uh, ourselves, we had a rough day on day one. Uh, we could have caught the fish better, but uh, I don't know, just that cross as a team, we had a very tough day on day one. Day two, good day. About what we expected for, if we had done that on day one, we would have been gold medalists. But we all know whose fault is, it's all of our fault. Fine job, like you say, to Russia. Well, gold medalists, what can you say? They earned it. <laughs> While trying to divide us fishermen on any category of baits, I would rather recommend you to throw away all your fishing gear. But leave only your all-time favorite marmishka. Because it would always help you out even in the dead of winter. And on the nastiest day you would cut the fish with the jig. Еще вопросы есть?